you do you find some problems that needs those concepts for you to answer the problem okay. then you just repeat that process again and again and yeah that will eventually make you ready for competitive programming contests Selamat datang di Ceritanya Developer, podcast yang menampilkan developer, programmer, atau engineer Indonesia inspiratif yang tersebar di seluruh dunia. Podcast ini disponsori oleh Showcase.com. Showcase adalah sebuah jaringan profesional yang dibuat oleh dan untuk developer sebagai tempat untuk berkoneksi, membangun komunitas, dan menemukan peluang baru. Bersama saya Riza, kita akan menggali bagaimana mereka berjuang, suka dukanya dalam perjalanan karir, hingga kesalahan konyol saat ngoding. Tapi di episode kali ini yang cukup spesial, kita tidak akan berbicara tentang perjalanan karir, karena narasumber kita yang satu ini belum memulai karirnya sebagai developer. Tapi kalau teman-teman ngikutin sosial media beberapa minggu terakhir, ada sebuah CV yang cukup viral, dan sekarang kita sangat terhormat bisa kedatangan tamu spesial, ya, jauh dari Singapura, yaitu adalah Ahmad Zuis Anajib. Kalau teman-teman nggak tahu siapa dia, dia adalah anak dari Mas Ainun Najib yang juga sudah pernah kita interview di ceritanya developer di episode-episode sebelumnya. Halo Zuis, gimana kabarnya? How are you? I am fine, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your time with this interview. I, I really excited to to talk with you. Okay. Okay. Before we begin our conversation, maybe you can start by uh, introduce yourself and what kind of person do you want to be known as? Hello, I am Ahmad Zuis Anajib and I am a student from Madrasah Irshad Zuhri Al Islamia, which is in Singapore. Uh, I love coding. especially competitive programming right now and possibly web development a little okay and i've been learning it and practicing it since since when since i've started learning it okay do you know what age do you start learning if programming if you mean coding as also including the block programming which is uh-huh. for example the lego or scratch yeah. then yeah It was since I was four years old. Four years old. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, how old are you? Nearing 12. No, 12. Nearing 12, okay. Yeah. And what kind of person do you want to be known as? I want to be known as a very good, possibly okay. the best programmer or software developer in the world. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why do you want to be software developer? What do you want to achieve? Um, ever since I have been exposed to technology, I have liked it and loved it ever since. And I'm just attracted to it. So I think software developing is the closest to my hobby and passion. Which is what? Solving problem? In a way, but also technology, IT. I see. Okay. Can you share your learning journey, learning uh, programming uh, journey uh, from the start? You learn. You start by learning block programming, right? Like uh, yes. Lego and uh, Scratch. And after that, until now. After that, I started with Python. Mm-hmm. First, starting with fun projects like Turtle. Okay. And then after that, I got introduced to competitive programming. Mm. In it, I used Python first, but then soon it became very slow, too slow. So I changed to C++. Okay. Yeah. And then after that, I've just been exposing myself to more other languages and areas in IT. Hmm, I see. So who inspire you the most? At first, when, when I'm... Just starting out on coding, mm-hmm. it, I was first inspired by my father, mm-hmm. mainly because he could do Python very good, and because he he seemed to know everything about Scratch and Python. Oh, and okay. then after that, uh, when I got into competitive programming a lot deeper, I was inspired by the pros of competitive programming. Oh, I see. Yeah. What do you think of your father? I think he is a very smart person. And I think he will really help me in the future and in my coding journey. So, uh, do you know uh, what's your father's job, uh, day-to-day job in his office? Yes, I think I know. I've just been listening to his meeting. <laughs> you think you know? I think I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, can you tell me 
Uh, I think his job is managing a data scientist team in Grab, mm-hmm. and it's something related to Azure because that's what he keeps saying in his meetings. Okay. And I don't know anything beyond that. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, maybe more, more or less lah, ya. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So a couple weeks ago, uh, your CV gone viral. One of the reason is maybe uh, your father's uh, followers, right? So uh, how do you feel? Uh, I feel very grateful and thankful for that to happen now because it's it it will make a very good first impression and that will be very impactful in the future. According to your CV, you have so many achievements you had in such a young age, right? Uh, what do you want to achieve? I want to achieve a very good, possibly the best sense of problem solving because with that, no matter what career, no matter what path I go in the future, I will, it will help me very much. Okay. Which achievement you proud the most? The, achieve, the achievements I'm proud of the most are those that were set, are of those competitions that were set by the top schools in Singapore. Like the HCIC competition, the SMOP Swachong competition, the NMOS competition, and the RIPMWC competitions. So, uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? You want to be like your father? When I grow up, I maybe want to be a software developer or a competitive programmer or like my father, a data scientist is unclear for me now because there are a lot of options. Yeah, my hobby may change in the future also. Yeah, I see. Yeah. But but in general, you want to be a problem solver, a, the, best, the best one, right? Yes. Okay. So which part of programming that you find interesting and fun? I think for competitive programming, mm-hmm. the part of it that I think is fun and interesting is... The algorithms, which is, for example, like Dijkstra, Kruskal's algorithm, they they seem so simple, but they're actually very uh, intuitive. Mm-hmm. They're very creative. So I wouldn't have easily thought about it. And I wouldn't have suddenly thought about it when I went to competition unless I already knew the algorithm beforehand. So okay. it's really interesting. It's really amazing. And what's what is satisfying about it is... When I'm able to solve problem in competitive programming, it makes me feel like I'm the smartest. <laughs> It's just very satisfying, kind of. Kind of. It is satis- very satisfying. It increases my self-esteem, you know. Okay, okay, nice. Can you explain to me or listener about what is competitive programming? Competitive programming is when you compete with other people. Mm-hmm. To solve a set of problems as efficiently as possible under the constraints given. You can give uh, some example uh, the constraint like uh, time or uh, performance or anything else. There is time, there is memory, but it's, it can also be based on the problem statement, like the number constraints. The number may be 1 billion, 1 trillion. It, it's based on the problem. They will likely give it. Okay. So each uh, challenge will be different Constraint, right? Yes. Okay. Nice. Do you think we just want to start uh, learning programming? Should learn competitive programming? Um, it really depends on your interests. If, if for example, you want to be a web developer in the future, then you should start learning a website, how to make a website. But if you are like, if you want to compete with others, then yeah, competitive programming is the best for you. It depends on what you want to be. Mm. Okay, is that common to learn programming at your age? Do your friend learn programming as well? My friends have just recently been exposed to programming because they joined the HCIC Infocom challenge. Okay. Uh, it's yeah, it's a competition, but I can't really say for true that there are that it's uncommon because I am just talking in the perspective of my school. I I don't know if it's common in other schools. Do your school teach you programming? No. No. No, they don't. Okay, so you just learn it by yourself at home yes okay i want to know about your daily activity looks like in school day from waking up to uh, sleep at night on a school day i wake up at five o'clock okay then i go to school at 6 20 mm-hmm. i reach home at on average i reach home at uh, 3 30 
3 to 3 p.m. Okay. PM. Uh, and then I will have a tuition afterwards or nothing. Okay. Actually, actually tuition, yeah. There will be tuition, definitely. Uh, okay. And then? And then the rest of the time is my free time, which I use for coding mm. or going out with my family okay. to some places. Are you playing games? Mm, not really. Not really? No, I don't. Un- unless my brother wants me to play with him because... My brother likes to play games, and but then he doesn't like to play alone. Sometimes when my sister doesn't want to play with him, or there's an argument, then he will ask me. Oh, I see. So, so you, you don't play a game by yourself, but because your brother plays. Yes. Oh, now I yes. see. So, so, so you you just uh, your hobby is programming and math. Yes. <laughs> okay. How much time do you spend to learn programming each day? On weekdays. The mm-hmm. time is limited, so it depends on the time span I have. But usually, based on the time span, I will spend about half of the time I have to do programming. Yeah. But uh, on weekends and holidays, it's different because on weekends and holidays, I have a lot of time. Mm. So I will spend like three quarters of it doing programming. Oh, okay. three quarters of your free time. Free time. Yes, free time. Oh. So... Uh, other than programming and solving math and geek activity, what is your hobby? Uh, that is a hard question. <laughs> Because it's that's the only uh, hobby you have? I think so. You, you don't like to watch uh, like a football match? Uh, when my father and my brother like to watch football. So when they want to watch it, they watch it outside where it's hard not to look at. So <laughs> okay. I'm inside also. Yeah. Mm. But other than that, I also like to play chess a little. Play chess? Oh, okay. Yeah. You play Best it uh, offline or online? Both. 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 Okay. Yeah. What about your favorite uh, programming language? Because uh, I saw your uh, Twitter and you you try so many uh, different programming languages. What is your favorite? I think it depends on the mood I am in. For example, if if I'm in the mood for competitive programming, then it's C++. C++. If I'm in the mood to just fool around and scribble, like doodle like that, okay. it's Python to make projects, fun projects. If I'm in the mood for some reason to build an app, then it's Flutter and Dart. Okay. If yeah, if I'm in the mood to change my website for something, then of course it's HTML, CSS, Flask, and JavaScript. Do you have uh, some uh, interesting projects lately? Lately, lately I've been trying to automate my computer processors with Python. Computer processors with Python. For example, like sending an email like that. Yeah, checking, discarding excessive emails, checking when my favorite YouTuber sends a new account, I mean, sends a new video. Oh, okay. You're using uh, what technology? Uh, Python only? Python only, so far. Python only, so far. Okay. Now, uh, what about uh, your favorite platform? Uh, is it mobile or, or web or robotic or... Um, I think so far it is the web could the website coding platforms for example codeforces.com mm-hmm. where it's a contest without a contest okay it's a contest without contest so it's yeah doing a contest maybe a virtual contest or just solving the problems of the contest but you don't have contest you don't have to fight with other people so what's the goal of the 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 web the website it's just for me to practice my yeah to practice for okay. competitive programming oh i see so uh let's say you want to learn a new technology or new platform like mobile uh, flutter or uh, anything else uh, how do you learn it i will first ask my father first mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then If I still need more information, then I will look online. And usually it ends there. In the rare scenario where I do not have enough information online, then either I will go to a library to find a book or I will ask other people, like my father's friends or my friend's father's. Mm. Uh, you meet your fr- father's friend a lot or sometimes? It's only sometimes, but it feels like a lot. <laughs> It feels like a lot. Okay. Uh, do you have uh, favorite books? Favorite books. Yeah. Uh, or favorite book? Any kind of book? Yeah, I think I have. I yeah, I had because there 
there was a book. There was uh-huh. this book. It's uh, my father got it from the library. I think mm-hmm. it's about Python, Python, where they teach you how to code a space adventure game. And yeah, the book basically teach you, teaches you about Pi game, how Python work, yeah, how sp- sprites, how sprites work, like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you make a game out of it? Ah, uh, no, I did not finish the project, so I just went to the website and downloaded the source code. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> what what the title of the book? Mission Python: Code a Space Adventure Game by oh. Shin Mc, McManus. Okay, nice. So, do you have tips for people who wants to learn competitive programming? Where to start? How to start? I think the best way is to slowly start with the basics of a language. It's, mm. us- it's usually most preferably C++ in competitive programming. Okay. And then with every new concept, for example, for loops or while loops like that, with every new concept, you do a problem to practice it. And then as you start acu- accumulating those concepts, once it's get once it gets a lot of concepts, you do you find some problems that needs those concepts. For you to answer the problem, okay. then you just repeat that process again and again, and yeah, that will eventually make you ready for competitive programming contests. Nice. Okay, we talk about your father. Uh, how impactful him to you? Uh, what about your mother? I think my mother helps me in the religious side. So my mother helps me with Arabic, with. Ukrawi with prophets. Okay. Uh, yeah, so she also helps me. Okay then. Uh, so if uh, someone wants to uh, get in touch with you or follow you, what is the best way to reach you? What is the best way to reach me? Yeah, maybe you can share your web or your social media or your YouTube channel. Maybe talk to me through Twitter because I'm currently trying to say hello Twitter a lot of times there. I will likely be looking at the comments, trying to find a language next to do. Okay. Do you have in uh, any language uh, in mind you want to try? Currently, I want to try Pyjax, Sison, like that. Okay. But I haven't. St- I haven't started on it. I just see it in the Wikipedia list of com- programming languages. Hmm. I see. I heard you had a YouTube channel. Yes. Uh, and w- what the content is? Uh, the content is basically me doing py- me doing coding mm-hmm. e- everywhere I am. It's just uploaded, so it's kind of like a blog. Oh, like like vlog, yeah. right? Yeah, like vlog. So you you uh, document your uh, coding journey and you upload it to YouTube. Okay, got it. Uh, one more uh, additional question: What do you think of Indonesia as a country? I think. Indonesia has a lot of potential in it, but most of it has not been found yet. Okay, you born in Indonesia, right? Can you speak Indonesia? Sedikit aja. Sedikit aja. Oh, so uh, your daily uh, language in uh, home, at home, and uh, in school is English. Uh, dengan ibu bapa uh-huh. pakai bahasa Indonesia, tapi kalau kalau dengan teman-teman pakai bahasa Inggris. Hmm. Kalau dengan Adik beradik pakai bahasa Inggris. Inggris juga. Oke, okay, kalau gitu. For that, thank you very much, uh, Joyce, for your precious time. And uh, don't forget to have fun in programming. Thank you. Terima kasih untuk narasumber yang sudah menyempatkan waktunya untuk hadir dan berbagi cerita di Ceritanya Developer. Kritik dan saran bisa dilayangkan ke Twitter at RizaFahmi22 atau boleh colek saya di showcase.com slash RizaFahmi. Linknya bisa dicek di deskripsi ya. Sampai jumpa lagi di episode berikutnya. Bye-bye.